Welcome to the King's Beat Podcast. I am James Ham, your King's Insider for ESPN 1320 and the King's Beat. Joining me, ABC 10, Sean Cunningham. Sean, what's going on? It's good to see you, James. Uh, I got to admit, I mean, we did this last Thursday and it feels like two weeks have happened since then. So I actually missed this. <laughs> it's been you a missed pretty it. busy few days. All right. Yeah, man. Yeah, Sean uh, took, the, took a car all the way down to uh, beautiful Los Angeles, California, where he caught uh, the NFC Championship game. Sean, yeah. uh, like I, I haven't was probably, done that. You could you could argue it was probably the I was the bad luck charm. Maybe I don't know. Oh, you're the bad luck. now, Sean. You did bring losing with you. Clearly, I did. Um, I did. Um, it was in a, was in a carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, like, look, I haven't got to cover an NFC Championship game. Um, that was it. Wasn't a hell of a game. It ended up being close at the end. But to be honest with you, it, it really the second half was kind of a dud. Yeah. Um, just like the the other game, the Kansas City um, Bengals game was also a, a dud. Just where are you at with uh, with what you saw this weekend and how that thing unfolded? Well, in my own coverage, I will. I you just brought that up about the NFC Championship. I'm actually two and one when the Niners are in the t- NFC Championship, so that's not so bad. But I'm zero and one in the Super Bowl for coverage. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of crappy, but no, um, yeah, it was a game that was, you know, I know this is King's talk, and you know, we we talk a lot about that, but it was definitely refreshing. A lot of local ties. It was cool to be down there, kind of see what the what the vibe is like around a, a winning organization. Um, by the way, that stadium is immaculate. But I would like to share, as someone, you know, to kind of we always like to bring, you know, show behind the curtain of just what we have to deal with day in and day out. Um, mm-hmm. Look, nobody feels sorry for us. We know it's a paid gig. It beats digging a ditch. But there are logistics that go into your day. And, like, when you think of a football game, you got to get there, like, three hours before tip-off easily. Uh, you got 70,000 people coming into a to a stadium. And then you're parking rather far away. And for TV, we got a lot of gear, so we're bringing a lot of stuff. So you're walking a little ways, and uh, it's, not, it's not a terrible thing, so that's fine. But then you get there, and the thing that blew me away is, like, no one knows where the press box is. Like, you're talking about workers in the building. Like, press box is going to be up. How do I get up there? Oh, I don't know. It, like, oh, it's on this side. Okay, we go on the other side, and it's not there. It's on the other side. Oh, great. So now you're just, and again, you have all this gear, so you got to take it with you. And a little bit of a tedious thing. But, uh, yeah, the stadium is probably the most beautiful stadium I've ever encountered in sports. And I, I haven't been to Jerry's World in Dallas, and I haven't been to the new – I haven't been inside the new Raiders stadium, but it was just unbelievable. And the game itself, well, we know how that turned out. I mean, there's a lot of criticisms. I felt like um, it was it very much reminded me of this Super Bowl right here in Miami uh, with the, that team coming away with the championship with the Chiefs. So, yeah, that fourth quarter was a letdown. You let 10 points go away, and Jaquaski Tart puts the blame on himself for dropping that, and Jimmy was like, peak Jimmy for people who, you know, have been all over Garoppolo and, and criticisms of him. And, you know, that interception was awful, uh, but he takes the sack and it's fourth and 20. I know everyone says, throw it away, throw it away, throw it away. And it's gosh, I mean, it's just so tough. It comes to a kind of a poetic end and it, it's a tough one, man. It's really tough. That team was really <laughs> an emotional wreck after the game. Wow. You know, I, I liked, I like watching, Maybe the second half of this season with the Niners. Like, I never felt like they were good enough to make it to the Super Bowl or to win the Super Bowl. I never felt that way um, from start to finish. Like, you always knew that you had limitations. And it's not even like like the old uh, Baltimore Ravens, like under Trent Dilfer, where you're like, man, we know that we can't, he's not going to win the game for us. He, Jimmy isn't even a game manager. Like, so, so you're stuck with this like weirdness of who and what he is and why you didn't switch uh, earlier in the season and go with something different. I get it. He gave you your best opportunity to win this year. He got you all the way to the NFC championship game, but realistically he didn't. If you look at the stats over the last, what was it? They hadn't scored a touchdown in like six quarters in the playoffs at one point. Um, And, you know, I I thought they went away from Debo I thought the defensive backfield was always going to be the problem. Um, I, I said that a m- multitude of times, and it wasn't just the the drop. It was the 15-yard uh, spearing penalty on um, 
was it Jimmy Ward? Yeah. Uh, it was... Uh, the helmet to helmet there, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, Williams, like, somehow not even, like, defending Cooper Cup on a... On a yeah, he... He like, tried to hit him, and Cooper was like, nope, and went right around him. And it's like, what are you doing? That's not the time to try to stick right there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. We had the, I'll say the, this. like You mentioned Garoppolo. Like, the guy was sensational for the first half of the game. I remember looking at our you know, our pal John Dickinson, who I came up with at KHDK, and uh, he now works for 95.7 The Game in San Francisco. And um, at halftime, while the Chainsmokers are performing, <laughs> I look at John and I went, how the hell are they doing this? How the hell are they winning this game? Like they yeah. shouldn't be winning this game. The, the the defensive stop, the interception Jimmy Ward came out with in that first quarter, like saved their ass in the worst way. And I actually felt like it took some wind out of the Rams because they didn't get back into the red zone for a while. Um, you know the defense is incredible. And you talk, we've talked about how all five stages of the, of the game, the Niners like need. For, I mean, their their defense is incredible. You know, for the shortcomings that they have with the quarterback, I mean, he looked like a all-pro quarterback in the first half. And then he has that one to Jalen Ramsey that he just dropped. That could have been maybe a pick six. So maybe mm-hmm. Kwaski and and Ramsey kind of cancel each other out, but Kwaski puts it on himself, and, and he's like, yeah, that might dropped interception, which meant more because it led to three points, The you know, the go-ahead, and it's it's brutal. It's brutal. And it's you brutal. know what? I mean, this team is so injured. Like, that's the other thing. Like, I don't even know that it was an emotional wreck of not making the Super Bowl so much as that there was like a, oh, my God, how do we get this far? I mean, we did it with literally glue and tape and, you know, paper clips. And, they, I mean, Trent Williams, high ankle sprain, probably going to need surgery. Jimmy, he just, I just, right before we started doing this, James, I was on with the Jimmy Garoppolo press conference. It was like a farewell. Um, just And, by the way, what just what a unbelievable classy individual i mean that say what you will about him as a quarterback that that team just adores him trey lance is like he he said you know he's gonna be like one of my best friends the rest of my life i mean that whole locker room wanted jimmy you know they they especially for that win streak that they pulled off and so um incredible he knows it's the end everyone realizes it's the end and more than likely and they're gonna probably pull a trade execute a trade maybe in the coming days i mean it really could happen rather quickly where they have a pathway out of san francisco so he wants resolution quickly the niners probably want the same thing and it's it's a little bit sad but it's definitely necessary yeah it's interesting um i we didn't intend to talk uh 49ers the first like eight (laughs) minutes of the podcast Um, but but i'll say this too like i i watched the two the afc and the nfc championship game um like if you guys hop on 1320 everyone knows it um, Mahomes has been my quarterback in fantasy football for like the last four years. We're a team rolling with Mahomes. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, so much more disappointed in the Chiefs not being in the Super Bowl than the 49ers because Jimmy Garoppolo is who he is. And what we saw in the second half from Mahomes, it, sadly, it's becoming who he is becoming. Uh, I mean, very quickly, like that's kind of who he's been most of the last two seasons. He's either so incredibly hot or ice cold and almost like, I don't know, like he's not engaged at all in what's happening. And I think it's really strange because you have one of the greatest quarterbacks, one of the greatest young quarterbacks in the history of the game who like shows up in the first half and is unbelievable. And the second half, he just never showed up, never showed up. I mean, some of the, the, I mean, the sack that he took late in the game and then fumbled, like, man, know what's going on. Like, what in the world? Like, just the the lack of presence in the game I, I thought was stunning. And, you know, like, shout out to our, our good friend Pete Youngman, um, who's a huge <laughs> Chiefs fan. Yes, he is. <laughs> and we've argued this point before. He's a little sick in the head when it comes to his Chiefs fandom. but Yeah, but I'll say it again. Like The reason why they're not in the Super Bowl is mainly because their quarterback didn't lead them to the Super Bowl. The Niners, oh. you knew their quarterback wouldn't lead them to the Super Bowl. The Chiefs, you expected him to lead you to the Super Bowl, and – he didn't. Uh, you know, everyone thought Debo would be the guy that led you there, and the defense would lead you there. But, uh, but look man. what he did. Look what he did in that divisional game. You know, I, I will say this. I mean, this can go for really all sports. I feel like, especially in the playoffs, 
postseason in general, baseball, football, basketball, basketball might be the one that's a little bit tougher, but even in hockey, like pressure is incredible. Like expectations are incredible. Like look at the bank, the way the Bengals are rolling right now. No one had expectations for them. They're in the Super Bowl, you know, um, I think the 49ers being in the NFC, no one thought that that, that was going to ha- really happen. Look, everyone's looking at the strength of the West, NFC West. And I know we're now 10 minutes into NFL talk, but it's like, just think about that. Like, there's kind of a um, a, a less weight of a, that comes with just those expectations removed and just playing free. And I and Jimmy kind of mentioned that, where he's like, everyone's talking about the, what we had with the trade. And yeah, I mean, for me, it was like the pressure's off. He's like, at this point, all I have to do is concentrate on football. You know what I mean? And then, like, once they went with Trey, like, the decision had been made. He's like, all right, well, I'll get to do this as long as I get to do this. And all I have to do is worry about me and, and what I'm doing with this team. And, and good things came as a result of that. So if only the Kings could, like, use some of the, hey, we're already screwed in the season. There's no expectations. Let's just go out and play and not get our heads kicked in. Yeah, I think it does bring us to a perfect segue. Because, I mean, we're going to talk about the losing streak. The Sacramento Kings losing streak is at um, seven games. Uh, they just, like, completely imploded on a five-game road trip. But they had started the implosion before they left. Um, this team is proven once again that this is who they are. And we should not be extremely confused or baffled because this is the 2021-22 Sacramento Kings. But, Sean, we talk about the pressure. We talk about expectations and um, either rising to the occasion, which, I, to be honest with you, I, I think Jimmy Garoppolo did do uh, for most of the time. He he basically gave you what he could give you. Um, but that's kind of not what we're seeing out of De'Aaron Fox. No. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle De'Aaron Fox specifically, and, and we're going to have a discussion. Fox missed his fifth consecutive game on um what is it on monday yeah (laughs) gotta figure out what day of the week it is at this point uh yeah he missed his his fifth consecutive game uh with what is being called uh a sore ankle a sore left ankle uh the ankle was not bad enough for him to show up on the injury report before the first game that he missed uh we have now got to a point where um he's just not playing I mean, uh, like I've checked in with just about everybody. I've asked the questions in pregame. I've asked if he's had another MRI or an MRI at all. The answer is no. The answer is there's nothing there that they can see. This is a player who goes out, warms up, and says he can't go. And, uh, again, I'm not going to question De'Aaron Fox's heart or, like, his ability to play through injury because I've seen it before. But what I'm starting to wonder is, uh, have the Kings broken De'Aaron Fox? And <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, in all honesty, I think that's where we're at in this discussion. Uh, we got the February 10th trade deadline like inching towards us. Um, I he came into camp a little off, uh, a little distant, from what I've heard. Um, he didn't look like himself early. He didn't look like himself early in the season. He finally started playing himself into shape. But now we've got one rumor after another, after another, after another. And I almost wonder if this isn't as much as anything, Sean, like a mental hiatus that like is brought on by A, trade rumors, and B, losing, and C, the fact that you know that your team is not good enough and it doesn't matter whether you play or not the chances of you winning a game are pretty slim. And so I don't know wh- where are you at with uh, Fox and the ankle injury and whatever is going on here. The thing that's crazy to me, not crazy, I guess, but a little odd. Cause usually when you have something like this and I'll go back to DeMarcus cousins, Tyreek Evans, Kevin Martin, um, it's funny. I, Wells to a I degree. For- I forgot about the Tyreek Evans moment where right. we're in the locker room with him and he just out of nowhere goes, yeah, I'm going to undergo uh, surgery on my on my plantar fasciitis like next week. We're like, what? <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Not to interrupt you, but I mean, you, it's, it's I bizarre, forgot about but, that. Uh, but this team has a very long history of just puzzling injuries. Even, I mean, we don't have to go that far back, James. I mean, look what happened to Rashawn Holmes, like, what, last year? Was it last year with the shoulder? Two years ago. The rotator cuff? I mean, yeah, it wasn't was it last season. 
Yeah, it was a I season mean, before. This team just can't. It's like just be honest. Just just be honest. This isn't. Sorry, I almost cursed. This isn't hockey. Lower bo- lower body injury, upper body injury, and and I I know why. There's look for people who don't know. There's politics. There's agencies. There's 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 a lot of there's a lot of things. Sometimes you don't want to disclose. Sometimes there's, there's injuries that might require surgery at the end of the year, and if somebody is around the trade deadline or around the the off season and could be a free agent, whatever, you don't want to like give any team reason to be like, well, I'm out. You, oh, you have the cert. I'm out. We don't need that, right? Well, the Joe Ingles issue. Yeah, and and oh, by the way, how does that pertain to Harrison Barnes? I mean, we can get into that here in a minute, but. Um, looking at Fox, like the one thing that's like really consistent is everyone I've talked to both publicly and privately will just say it's literally a pain tolerance for him right now. And it's just not there. And I've asked, is it high ankle sprain? Is it, I mean, that's it. it, There's a, there's a weird um, parallel to the 49ers and what Trent Williams was dealing with because Trent Williams was out there hobbled. I mean, you could just see it that the guy was absolutely on his last leg and obviously he's a man of larger carriage on that offensive line he still played but it ended up being a high ankle sprain and you know that those things are absolutely brutal as we get a terrence davis medical update yeah we got a terrence we'll davis medical second. update uh terrence davis has undergone successful surgery on his right wrist um is expected to make a full recovery and will be reevaluated in three months um terrence so, terrence davis like as it's happening uh as we're sitting here is is basically out for the season. Uh, yeah, effectively. I mean, yeah, that's sorry. Gonna be, we're uh, gonna. This is this is here. Here we are. Like it's almost as if a trade happened, only didn't. <laughs> but um, to go back to that point, it's really just a pain tolerance with this guy, and uh, you know, who am I to say what the guy can do and what he can't? We keep hearing that most people speculate, and they go, "Hey." Uh, if this was a playoff game, he'd be playing. I don't think that's a good thing to hear for fans and, and for even media because then you start going, okay, well, then why not here? Why not there? And then when you miss five games, that's not necessarily a day-to-day thing. I mean, this was an 11-day road trip, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I think he hasn't played since the 19th. He's tried to give it a go. Um, we know we've seen the footage of him working out, trying to run, and ultimately deciding not to. So... It's an it's an odd time. I I don't like to. I'm not going to kill him here, or because I want to wish I could speak to him uh, even privately. I haven't been able to talk to him yet, so um, I don't really have much on it. But the the one interesting thing is that everyone is very consistently saying it's all about pain tolerance at this point. But James, I bring that up only to say if we fast forward a week from now, maybe after the trade deadline. I mean, we're, we're we're the first day of February as we record this, so we're ten days away from the trade deadline. What if day before, day after, we get a release just like we did with this Terrence Davis, and he's visited with a specialist and rely and there's something there. There's something that's 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 not for you know. Would it surprise anybody? I mean, we've seen this before. Uh, yeah, we've seen it before. I, I'll tell you this: I I had a conversation with Doug Christie. Um, about the time when he was traded from the Kings to the Orlando Magic for Catino Mobley. He had gone to the Kings multiple times and said, I have something wrong with my ankle. And they kept saying, look, man, we've done x-rays, we've done MRIs, we don't see anything. Um, like, you you might have a bone spur there, you might have something, but there's nothing we can really see that, that should be causing you this much pain. So uh, he got traded to Orlando was not happy at all with the fact that he got traded to Orlando at all. Right. Not uh, at all. No, he was very upset, wanted to finish his career in Sacramento, uh, got to Orlando. I think maybe he played like six or seven games, maybe eight games in Orlando, and then shut it down and went in for surgery. When he went in for surgery, uh, he did have a bone spur, but the bone spur had grown around his tendon, and he went in for what was supposed to be like an hour. Let's see, he played 21 games in Orlando uh, total. Um, anyway, he went in for a surgery, and uh, it ended up being like a six-hour ordeal when it was only supposed to be like an hour uh, for a cleanup. And they literally had to cut bone all around a tendon that basically a calcium deposit slash bone 
had grown over the top of a tendon and Doug was in a tremendous amount of pain and it was 100% legitimate and the Kings missed it. And yeah. so, so I, I think that that's something that like, I'll point to, like, we don't know. Uh, I will tell you this though. The Kings came into this season and I think they had, they had good buy-in early on. Um, they had good buy-in. We saw uh, the Rico Hines stacking days situation where, like, we're going to get better every single day. Uh, they had Luke Walton, which the team did like. The team was behind Luke Walton. And then they didn't really do anything in the offseason to bolster this team. They did some things, but not nearly enough. Uh, you know, Tristan Thompson, Mo Harkless, Terrence Davis re-signed, drafted Davion Mitchell, added Alex Len. Um, none of those are earth-shattering. And I think maybe a bigger issue is that you had 15 guys, including two-way players, who were bought in and pulling on one rope, and you had two guys in Buddy Heald and Marvin Bagley who both had gone to the franchise, requested trades, and were still on the roster. Buddy was almost traded on draft day. He was not traded. He's still sitting there. Marvin Bagley was... Uh, asked to be traded. The Kings tried to find a home for him, could not find something that made sense to them, which me meant basically taking on like a second round pick for Marvin Bagley. Uh, at this point, you might be lucky if you get a second round pick at the deadline for Marvin Bagley. Uh, it was with this idea that the Kings might have some monster trade that they could pull off at some point. Here we are months later, and the guys that didn't buy in, that weren't wanting to be part of this franchise are still sitting there. There has not been a major trade. And I think that the doom and gloom surrounding the Kings is as much about that uh, as it is about anything else. I think it's a big part of why this team continues to lose, uh, why this team is, is not pulling together, because realistically, they all know that there are a handful of players that won't be here after February 10th. And even if they are after February 10th, they won't be here this summer. And so it's hard to have a team um, when you don't really have a team. You have a collection of players. And I think that that is where we're at right now. I think it's part of the reason why De'Aaron Fox has chosen not to fight through whatever pain and get back on the court. Uh, I think it's a reason why they've lost seven straight and why they're 16 games under 500. There is not a collective buy-in, and this isn't about Alvin Gentry. Uh, this is about a collection of players. It's about a collection of players that should not have come into the season together. And we now know that, uh, but we probably knew that, uh, you know, in October when this team was, was opening the season. I'm going to disagree with a good okay. portion of that um, because certainly it's not ideal. You know, both those players wanted to be traded, by the way, they weren't the only ones. Um Yes, the organization tried to, you know, make moves. That's that's well documented at this point, along with other players. Um, but that's pretty. I mean, look, I don't think that has any bearing on the chemistry. I think you know, the, the, especially with the players that that you talked about with Marvin and Buddy, that dates back to last year. So they already knew. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that the. I mean, they still like these guys. It's not like it's not like they're like, oh, well, f that guy. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. For some people, it might be there, but I don't think that's played a result in the wins losses. I think this team just isn't good, as you said, James. And I do agree with this part. It is just a collection of players, and they're not that good. It's just not a team, and I think that's where it ends right there. I don't think. I think we're trying. I think a lot of that is a little bit too much in the weeds. When in reality, is it's not that complicated. It's just not that good of a team. I do agree, though, James, that at where you get to a point in the season based off things that have happened, it's compounded harder. And I think, I think to me, it just looks like last year. It really does. Like there's the the similarities between last year, and that's to me the tragedy of this all. Because when we've talked about what they came into the season, it was a double down of last year, of mm -hmm. a small sample size. But what did we see last year? We saw a long run of losing streaks, and here we are in the midst of another one. You've lost twelve of fourteen. Now, what we didn't see that is a little bit more alarming at this point 
is an overall quit. Like there's just an overall quit. And I don't think that has anything to do with Marvin Bagley or Buddy Heald and their desire to want to maybe get out of town because it's not exclusive to those guys. And you have a whole locker room of dudes that are at this point are just like, please trade me. Just please trade me. You know, yeah, and, and there's I, a whole bunch of dudes, like by the way, that are still playing very, very hard. And I, I mean, you know, shout out to Tyrese Halliburton and Davion yep. Mitchell and Damian Jones and guys that, you know, they see the opportunity in front of them, and they're like, "Yeah, get some of these guys off this team." And even if there is a freedom of play, where if you know, like you mentioned, Jamie, I mean, Buddy is in an absolute just tailspin right now. I mean, it's it's as bad. I've been, a, I mean, I'm obviously a, I've been a pretty big Buddy supporter because, again, I always say. <laughs> Buddy Heald is playing a role on the Sacramento Kings that he should not be playing. I mean, you you count on him to be one of your best players, and that, that's not it's not where you would be anywhere else. But that being said, like this dude is just lost. He was lost last year. He was a little bit lost the year before that. He hasn't been right since Dave, and the, that's that's the one thing I always loved about Buddy is the minute Dave was gone, you know, there might have been a conflict there in terms of personality and butting heads at times. But the first thing he said to me, he looked me in the eye, he says, but I had my best season under Coach Dave. Yes, you did, buddy. <laughs> yes, you did. So that's, I mean, that's, a, that's to me, a telltale sign. To, but to go back to the overall thing, I just think you, it's, it's not you, because I know a lot of people feel that way. It's certainly something you can identify, but I just don't think it's a direct culprit of the overall product. Like the cake is already burnt and gross and no one wants to eat it, you know? It doesn't matter how it all came together. Like it's just shit. Like this is this is just collective shit. And everybody is everybody has given up. Uh, you like to use the, the the phrase "let go of the rope." Oh yeah. It's just brutal. It's so brutal um, that I think this makes it a little easier. I I I don't know how this losing twelve of fourteen. And I said this for the past month, James. Think about it. They won three games in January. I think it was three and twelve in January. So I've been saying this for a month. Monty McNair has to save this team from itself because it's that it, it's it's that bad, um, and and it's so detrimental to where. And I we talk about all the time things can happen so quickly in the NBA. <clears throat> Excuse me, where all of a sudden maybe you have to reassess and and maybe not look so much as the trade deadline and maybe look at okay we're a lot closer to the bottom than we've ever thought we'd be. How do we look at now? But you're still not that far out of the play-in tournament, which is gross. I mean, to me, it doesn't matter. Like, I, I said this for weeks. This season, be damned. I don't care. Like, if you're going to compete, compete. If you're going to develop, develop. Whatever you're going to do, I think you can do both. But I think you have to approach the trade deadline as making your team better overall. I don't give a damn if it's making a push for the playoffs. Some people might need that to save their jobs. I would hope not. But you have to improve your overall product in general because it is just absolutely disgusting. I, I agree 100%. It's absolutely disgust, disgusting. And I'll say this too. like I'm not saying that this season is this bad solely because of... I'm not placing blame on Marvin Bagley and Buddy Heald. I'm placing blame that they're still there. That, yeah. That's the problem. James, I go, I, I, go back to, I go back to last year. And I, I remember t- t- speaking to you and some other people... And it's like, oh, they're going to trade these guys. They're going to trade these guys. And I was like, well, what if they don't? <laughs> I'm like, I was like, there's a. It's funny because you can see like the pathways, right? You can. I, I was like, yeah, I can see a pathway to where here we are in training camp, and these guys are still here. I didn't believe that. Like, I, I was fully expecting someone to be moved, but just not definitively. I was like, no, I can still see. I can still see Marvin Bagley being here because X, Y, and Z. You don't. You're not good enough to get rid of unproven talent. All those things I would always go to, and things I've been talking to people all over. the all over the league about. And then with Mike Buddy, and it's like, okay, you're not going to take pennies on the dollar, whatever, you know, the expression you want to use. And then you get you, you get used for leverage. And now you've got an organization that has to navigate the crazy waters of leverage and how to, and, and people thinking you're just absolutely desperate to do anything. And maybe you are, maybe at this point you are. And that's what's so crazy. It's like, you think about just last week, what's the narrative? Oh, they're out on Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons, the asking price, it's not comfortable, blah, blah, X, Y, Z. Now you get to this point, and it's like, okay, it, like don't fool yourself. If the if conversations have an, happen all the time, yep. All the I think the message that people need to understand is it's not that they're out on Ben Simmons; it's that they're not going to make Ben Simmons that priority. 
10 day, you know, a week and a half, two weeks from the trade deadline where there's no movement that's happening at that point. You just keep hitting the wall. All right, we got to look elsewhere. Get a few days in, all of a sudden talks, keep, whatever. Maybe the asking price is different. Maybe there's something other. Maybe uh, there's so many options that come about. There could very much be a Ben Simmons piece. And actually, if you, I would encourage everybody, if you haven't read it, Ramona Shelburne had an outstanding piece uh, about Ben Simmons on ESPN Plus today. I, If you have any inkling about Ben Simmons and want to know what that whole scenario is like, read that because it's, it's outstanding. Yeah, I haven't gone all the way through it. Um, it's it's long, and I, I started it this morning, but I hadn't got all the way through it. Um, yeah, you know what? And, like, look, I knew for a fact at the end of last season that Marvin Bagley was not part of the future of the Kings. Like, it's it's not that, like, there's – I didn't believe that there was no way that he wouldn't be traded. Like, I there, of course, is – like, I thought he would be traded, but I also knew it didn't matter. It did not matter, which we saw play out in the first – month of the season when Luke Walton didn't play him at all. Right. Like he, he's out there on the bench. And I mean, Marvin Bagley's played like 26, 27 games. That's it. Um, you know that, I mean, he, he was not part of the future of this team and they knew that when they let him go home, um, when he heard his, he heard his hand last year, it was like, okay, we're done. We're done. And like the wife lag. Yeah. We've had enough of the Marvin Bagley experience. We're done now. Like I, I, I've said this again. I think Marvin has played well, and I don't think Marvin has been a distraction. I think it's the letdown. And, and you know, we talk about this all the time, Sean, that if you, you know, you think your house is worth $2 million and you put it on the market and all you can get is $750,000, uh, then you don't have a $2 million house. You have a $750,000 house. Or less. Uh, <laughs> or less. Now, let's let's flip this around. I kind of feel like, that the Kings are in a situation where they need to realize that as a franchise, if they are at a position where the offers that they're making to people aren't good enough, those offers aren't going to get better. Like Mm. your players, well, no, I mean, your players aren't going to get better. Like you need to look at the offer that the other team is, is giving you look at it honestly and say, okay, maybe we should look at this because what we have here is a colossal dump. Like, this is the worst (laughs) that we've seen. Like, this one, like, you need to go repaint your bathroom afterwards. Like, I don't don't know that a lot of these players shake the stink of this. Like, this is bad. This is bad for a lot of these players. It's a bad look for a lot of these players. It's a bad look that we're having a discussion about De'Aaron Fox's ankle because he's missed five games in like a phantom way. Like that's not a good look for anyone. And I mean, I've checked behind every door to see if there's something major wrong there. And I've been told outside sources, no, it's not even an ankle sprain. No, no, he's okay. But it ain't like you don't miss two weeks. Now we got to go through reconditioning. Like the, so what I'm saying is like this season, the way that it's gone It's so bad that I think at some point you do need to look at kind of what you've said, Sean, where like, I don't care what you have to give up. If you're getting an all-star, a 25 year old all-star under contract for long-term in return, because at this point, the only way to succeed in the NBA, almost like every single step of the way is if you have an all-star, the Kings haven't had an all-star. I wrote about this on Sunday. They haven't had an all-star since uh, DeMarcus Cousins. Before that, they hadn't had an all-star since Peja Stojakovic and Brad Miller. The Kings have only, if I'm not mistaken, ever acquired two bona fide all-stars, ever. And that's Chris Webber. Brad Miller and Chris Webber. And Brad Miller. You know, there was, uh, Jerry Reynolds will tell you, the one trade that that got away, the trade that uh, ownership would not pay for, was he had um, Lionel Simmons shipped to Seattle for Detlef Shrimp and he was going to partner Detlef Shrimp and Mitch Richmond together and have a duo, which at that point there were no trios. There were like, if you had a duo, you were really good. Um, yeah. How about that uh, for a splash brothers? Yeah. I, well, <laughs> Sean, but the point is like this team has to find an all-star and De'Aaron Fox, we thought might be able to get there. I don't think anyone believes that at this point, not after this season and what's happened. I mean, 
without getting a hard reboot and him rediscovering whatever it is, like you don't come into a season playing like he did and and tell me that he was 100% engaged and ready to play on day one. You can't convince me of it. Not the way that we see. He, he wasn't shot out of a cannon. That, you know, that's like, I, I don't even know what that is. It's like that, that little rocket ship when you're a kid and you fill with water and you stomp on it and it goes like <laughs> eight feet in the air and you're like, woo! That's, that's a good what, stomp if you got it eight feet. I'll give that, you that. That's what that thing was. That yeah. wasn't like he didn't shoot himself out of a cannon here like coming into the season. And it's fine that he's played himself into into a better place. But now here we are again and he's going to have to again or we're going to have to see him ramp back up. And like this is it's just crazy what we're talking about this season. Um, you know, Sean, that, that brings us. Uh, I did ask um, Alvin Gentry. Alvin Gentry twice this season is. Um, oddly, after we're done talking, brought up that he's not quitting. Um, and like again, this isn't a knock on Alvin Gentry, and I don't blame him because I like he's a a proud man who does not quit things. Like I, I know what that's. I, I don't quit things. Um, he doesn't quit things, and I totally get it. Right? You almost um, wish. I mean, you wish his players would echo that. That would, you know, if you could carve a piece of Alvin Gentry's heart and soul and put the in, into some of these guys, like. Yeah, it's amazing. It really is. Well, let's get to the clip, the clip that uh, I asked Alvin. I, I told him, you know, well, uh, uh, the questions in there. So you guys will hear this. Here's Alvin Gentry. If somehow I break this, you guys know, like, <laughs> don't break it, James. I, I apologize. <laughs> don't do that, Vincini. All right, here we go. Alvin Gentry. Yeah, Alvin, you've told us a couple of times this season that you've never quit anything in your life. Um, and, and I fully believe you. Uh, but do you think that some of your players have let go of the rope at this point uh, with the losses stacking up? Well, I think the losses are stacking up. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that they would have to answer individually. You know, I would sure hope not because uh, I, the opportunity that you have to be an NBA player and the lifestyle that it affords you, uh, I think you've got to be crazy to quit. So, uh you know, I, I, I do think that we need to find a way to do something tangible uh, and come up with uh, some wins. You know, I think wins are the thing that, uh, you know, that, 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 that solves all your problems, really. You know, so we've got to find a way to do that. But in order to do that, we just have to compete and play at a really high level and be focused in on what we're trying to do. I just didn't think we did that tonight. We just got to get better at it. And we got to get uh, better at it night in and night out, not just occasionally. And we're back. Sean, he That's wouldn't right. say it. No, but, I mean, what do you want him to do? No, I, I mean, it says everything. You need to ask the players. You know what we don't get to do? Like, if you make a list of the players that you think have quit on this team, uh, we don't get to talk to those guys. <laughs> we very, talk to very... the guys that score some buckets even in a 53 point loss. That's what we, we get the three dudes who actually scored uh, in a 53. We don't get the other guys that you could look at and say, did you quit? Um, so, so, I mean, it's, it's not very nice to say it that way, but at the same time, Sean, there are at least a, a couple of guys on this team that have flat out quit. Yeah. I mean, there's just, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's undeniable. Just look at the way that, just look at the, I mean, you've got two games out of this road trip that were competitive, and some of the ones that have quit weren't really a factor. You know, I mean, some look sometimes you're out there and some guys will still play hard, uh, but the overall just give a damn is just not there. You know, there's a lot of playing for yourself and and and, and all that. Like this team doesn't move the ball like it should. I mean, they, I mean we've got the mountain laundry list of of things that you can go down, but I mean, every everything he said is spot on, and and it's if I'm a player listening to that, unfortunately, that's that's essentially him calling his team out, you know, and he should, but unfortunately, you can't really name names. Um, Alvin's in a tough position, man. He really is. He's in a very very tough position, and we got to the point of talking about you know just how where they are in the season, and it's the one thing I'm ready to see. Maybe even as we get closer to the deadline, maybe not because James, you mentioned something like about how trades, like just the lack of movement, whatever. 
just remember how many trades actually happen on the day on the day of the deadline. Most like that's important. That's that's important to know because like you'll have all these conversations, and you know sometimes you might be dealing with a team where they look at you in the standings and they realize they might be helping you or whatever, and they're just going to be like, all right, we'll 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 drag this out. We'll let we'll you know we have a deal in place. Go find something else if you don't like it, but doesn't mean we're going to pull the trigger right away. We'll wait until we get to the deadline. So um, it's just tough, man. Like th- th- again, this team needs to be saved from itself in the worst way. And once you get past the 10th, if you haven't struck lightning in a bottle, if you haven't, if you don't have like a four of five or a four of seven, four of eight, if you're not, you don't have a five, you know, whatever, if you don't have something that's kind of building at that point, then shut it down. Just, just play who's you're going to compete. Like I really do feel, I think people took Alvin at his word and, and, and me, one of them, but I think you have to understand like where they are in the season. It's not like you can just go out there and put Lou King and, Nimi Keita in there and Jemias Ramsey and these guys that, that likely need opportunity and you know there's still an evaluation going on in terms of their NBA futures you can't do that a month and a half or whatever it was ago when he took over <clears throat> so because of where you were competitively within the standings you couldn't just give up on the season at that point and if you're not landing anything that's necessarily helping you this season then you're just going to have – to me, that's what you do. You you even change the starting lineup. You you don't play certain guys. Like, I'm sorry, you don't need to play Buddy Heald at that point. You know, if you've already – if your mind is already made up on some of these guys, you don't do it. Maybe save, it's a – Save the incentive money. Right. Like, yeah. what, what, I mean, what are you doing? Um, yeah. So and, – and now with Terrence – I mean, you might – the funny – I mean, the unfortunate part is with Terrence out now, I mean – if you're Jemias Ramsey, buckle up, buddy. This is your this is your shot, right? Like you you you're you should be getting bulk minutes now, bulk rotational minutes, and that's the way. Hopefully, that looks going forward. Yeah, I think the it brings us back to maybe the next topic of discussion. Which um, you're right, you you can't when Alvin took over, you can't just bail on the season at that point, um, especially with again this this stupid play in tournament just hanging over your head. It's just still sitting right there, and I think one of the problems. Well, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Uh, and I, about, I think it's also point uh, crucial to point out, James, as you mentioned that. I think a lot of people look at the playing tournament and go, "That's the playoffs." It's no. not. It's not. It's a gimmick. It doesn't mean you've made the playoffs. It's 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 a complete separate thing. So let's say, for example, Tyrese Halliburton, who just came off a career high the other night, goes in there and breaks his career high in the postseason tournament in that playing tournament. It will not be a playoff career high. It will not be that. It'll be strictly its own thing. So you have to win the play-in tournament to get into the playoffs, and that will be considered the playoffs. I can't tell you how many times I see that on social media or even written about, which is even more crazy, where people think that that would break a playoff streak it, or a playoff nope. drought. It will not. Sorry, James. I didn't mean to go ahead. <laughs> no, and I'll, I'll even I'll make sure people understand it. It's it's this much. So if Buddy Hield, for instance, has a clause in his contract that says he gets two hundred fifty thousand dollars if the kings make the playoffs the play-in doesn't count unless they win two play-in games and they if they're the 10 unless they win the play-in spots and get into the playoffs then they do not get that bonus it it is not considered part of the playoffs for the for the sake of bonuses and so i mean that should like functionality in the cba it does not count. Uh, but to get back to the point that we were talking about, it's this issue that you're like, well, you know, at some point they are going to go with uh, Jemias Ramsey, Namias Keita, Lou King, uh, maybe Robert Woodard. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but, you know, th- this group of young players that are hiding on the bench. <laughs> you almost um, made me spit out my water, James. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Chemezi Metu, uh, Damian Jones, whatever it is, whatever the young group that you have. Here's the problem that you have if you do that like a couple of weeks ago. You do actually have players on this team that are young and that you already know are NBA players. Uh, Davion Mitchell is one that he at least has shown that he can be a rotational player. But Tyrese Halliburton is the other. And I think at some point, you got to seriously consider the fact that you're breaking Tyrese Halliburton. And uh, we asked him about... Well, I, it was Jason Anderson asked him about silver linings um, from a game. Uh, to, for, to be honest with you, 
like I saw when Ty walked up, like I'm not, you, you lost a fifth consecutive game. The dude is doing everything he can in his power to win games. I mean, he put up 38 points a game before uh, he put up what, 22, 24 and 10. Um, he, he could have had like 18 assists, but his teammates were horrible and couldn't hit a shot, uh, which he set them up all day long. But let's go to our second clip, which is, uh, this is Tyrese Halliburton on losing and whether there's some sort of silver lining uh, to what's happening on the court right now. No, there's not. We're losing. Um, you know, I think uh, as a young player, I'm just trying to take it in stride and, and, and learn from it and, you know, learn as much as I can, but there's no, there's no silver lining. We're just losing. We're just losing, Sean. We're just losers. That's about as honest an assessment as you're going to get. Um, I, I love Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, he's been a breath of fresh air since he got to Sacramento. Um, that's why you don't cash in the season at game 30 or game 40, because you're going to do irreparable harm to a guy like Tyrese Halliburton. And if you think I might be embellishing or like, you know, blowing this thing out of proportion, I'll just point to exhibit a Deer and Fox who you may have broken Deer and Fox. And I, I laughed at that earlier because how many times this in this season have we said, oh, they finally broke someone. They finally broke. I mean, they finally, they finally broke, broke you me. at one point. <laughs> yeah, and that was I had been broken for too long. I had been broken since the off season, And, you know, it's just just ridiculous, man. It really is. It's ridiculous. Um, OK, so I, I think that that. Um, let's see. I. Uh, I mean, there's where do a, we go? Where, do you want to <laughs> see them? Do you want to see? This is what's interesting too. Like, I feel we talk about how things can change, and you got the trade deadline coming up. Well, last week, I, I, oh man, and we predicted this, James. That's why you need to listen to this freaking podcast every week because what did we say, James? I said I, I think they're going to go on five on this podcast on this trip. They did, they did it, and I and it, you know, it's kind of rooting for them. I mean, Philly, I thought that would have been like the all time kind of cool moment for them, especially just with all the the scenarios that are hanging over this team, that would have been kind of cool to see that that, that, that team go in there. Everybody and... auditioning, man. They all got like their fancy pants on. they all got their makeup on. Like, Take me. They got their hair done. <laughs> That's what it was. Come on, Sean. Yeah. Philly was like, it was. We're auditioning. Let's hit this. Yeah. Bro, I mean, and so like going back to that, it's like you're, you're, because you're so close to the bottom, all of a sudden your pick this year looks a hell of a lot more attractive than it did even a week ago and the week before that and the week before that. But it also becomes even bigger of a trade piece. Like it's, it's this like big shining star. It's just glistening and glowing and like you can, it can be had. And you know what? I would trade it. I would. Sean for certain tra- people, for certain okay. people. Okay. So <laughs> I wouldn't just like give it away. You know? That that really does bring us to, uh, one of our our last topics here, which is, uh, look, you're 16 games under 500. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're what three and a half or four games or three games. I don't know what even what it is at this point out of the play in game. It doesn't matter. You are a horrible team. You are a team that is 16 games under. You almost have lost twice as many games as you have won. I mean, they are 18 and 34. They've been stuck on 18, like, like oh, forever, no. man. Like, James, I, we we were doing math. Average margin of victory in the last five games is 20. No, no, that's the average margin of defeat. Sean. Excuse me, what I say? Victory? <laughs> yes. Victory by the other team. <laughs> victory. <laughs> victory for the other team. <laughs> that's called a reverse <laughs> victory. Sean. See what I did there? <laughs> Jedi mind trick. Yeah. They, need, they need me on those negotiations. I'll talk someone into pulling uh, a trade. This is not the loss <laughs> you're looking for. This is not what you're for. looking for. <laughs> uh, it's funny. I did that on ESPN. Funny Field is an 13. all-star. <laughs> yeah. I did this on ESPN. This is, yeah. And, like, they just sat there. Like, they had no idea what I was talking about. We got to a break. They're like, hey, what was that about? And I'm like, you guys haven't watched Star Wars? Like, no, these aren't those, the droids no. you're looking for? No. No, nope. uh, D'Lo Cr- and Casey, Crickets. they have not watched Star Wars. I was, I was absolutely shocked. Um, but yeah, it really does bring us to, like, 
the only pathway forward is to like do something drastic and and get yourself an all-star and build around that all-star right um but like if you're Monty McNair what how tough of a, of a position are you in right now this is like the worst position you could be in because you are you got an owner telling you I want to win now I want I want that 10th seed I want the play in and you're looking at that as like okay I've got to make a move probably to save my job but you're the number five pick in the draft it like you you have the fifth best odds of landing a top four spot like this season can't be about winning anymore Sean it has to be about it has to be about the draft pick I mean, at well, some point, well, unless it does, you're unless though. you're all star, unless that you know that player you can grab is that all star you're talking about, or you know someone who's under contract and making that ascension that you just project to be that guy. Like, there's options. There's so many options. And again, James, part of it is frankly going to be cutting, shedding salary because you can't be near the cap and being this terrible. I, I get it, but I mean, if I'm looking at it, being totally honest right now, right. if I'm the Sacramento Kings, I'm looking at this pick that where they're at right now, and I'm telling Philly, I'll give you Harrison Barnes, Buddy Heald, and a 2022 unprotected first-round pick for Ben Simmons. Take it or leave it. That's the best deal you're going to get. We are literally a top-five pick. Right. That's that's And, that's and, the, and I still feel like Daryl Morey will not do it, and he's gonna he's gonna try to wait to the off season, the draft, whatever it is, because of the success success of his team right now, and it sucks because you know they they probably they're gonna need the help to, to you know for anything, but to for help them for the playoffs and maybe make a championship push because they're playing so incredible, but again, I don't think he's gonna do anything crazy. I mean, he might look at that five pick whatever, but I think still think in the, in the if he's holding out, if his if his ultimate goal is James Harden, you weren't good enough. You just don't have it, you know. But to me, you mentioned Harrison Barnes. To me, is the most interesting piece right now, because Atlanta, Utah, both can use him. There's a lot of teams that could probably use him, but especially Utah right now with Ingles going down, they already had interest. Um, I don't know what that really gets you. You know, I had heard a Jordan Clarkson thing out there a, a week ago. You know, I don't know what that if that tickles anyone's fancy. I probably wouldn't. But how would it? I mean, like, I don't I, know. I get you, but like, yeah, what are you doing with Jordan? I'm just Clarkson? saying, like, I'm just saying, like, in terms of because look, they're going to have to replace Joe Ingles. They f- still think that they're championship contenders. You know, try and find a, a, a somebody that thinks that Clark's. Look, it's not a deal that I would necessarily make, especially if you're moving to Harrison Barnes. But um, there's conversations to certainly be had there. I think that's going to be something that to look out for, especially uh, now that that ACL has torn for Ingles. That's a big blow for them. Yeah, I, I think that you probably are going to see... I mean, there's a good chance that this Kings team does get picked apart at this point. Like, we've been saying it for a long time, that this is the path forward. Like, in, if you can't get an all-star, then you need to dump. Dump, 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 dump. Get whatever you can for some of your veterans. Clear and out the salary not a, cap. That is not a Tuesday overreaction, by the way, because we have, <laughs> we've, been, we've been hammering that button for a while. <laughs> it's not a Tuesday. Oh, man, it is Tuesday. It's okay. That was we our for, that was our moment. I got your back, buddy. Tuesday over reactions. That was it. <laughs> we it just is. did it. Yep. <laughs> it just happened. Um, yeah, no, no. It, it's time to to do something that makes sense for the future of this this franchise. Which is like that's the problem that Monty McNair is in. He has an owner who's saying win now. He has a roster that's saying you ain't winning. You got a draft pick that keeps getting better realistically the best thing that this team could do trade for an all-star that's hurt and or an all-star that may not play for a while and keep losing and don't give up your first round pick this year give up your first round pick in 2023 your 2023 25 picks for whatever it is that you're going to get and really you know give yourself something to work with here um and and to build around i I don't know man it's a hot mess and uh, it's not getting any better. It's only getting worse. And then, oh, by the way, the Brooklyn Nets are rolling through Sacramento, followed by a back-to-back in Golden State. This is a nine-game losing streak. <laughs> well, it's not. 
Yes, yes, James. But there's not a. I mean, Brooklyn's kind of depleted, right? I mean, Brooklyn could walk out there and just put Kevin Durant out there uh, with like like four G leaguers, and they're still going to win by twenty. I feel like like, call me crazy, and maybe I should look at the injury report before I make this outlandish statement. But what I I of all the games I was expecting, you know, when I saw the ankle injury and all these, I I just went. Okay, the the trip is what it is. I thought Fox was playing at the Garden. I really did because I, you know, dude just loves to pl- to play at the Garden. He didn't. Yep. I kind of feel like he wants to play against Kyrie Irving. Really? Could be wrong. Yeah, it c- could be wrong. He just sat out at the Garden, and I, I, I don't buy it. I don't. I don't buy it. So two days yeah. later, though, I mean, soreness. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sean, I'm it's to, been, I'm, it's I'm been grasping 11 at days. straws at that. <laughs> it had, well, I mean, was it going to be 13, 14 days? I mean, shoot. Like, yeah, we're going to, I feel like we're going to find out something different on this ankle. I just, I'm just bracing for it. I really am. I think we're going to find out uh, that, like, that he wants to shut he, it down. That he may not play again until after February 10th. Um, but that would be brutal. I don't know. I mean well, that that Sean, that would be completely. <laughs> I'm looking, By the way, it, James Harden it, is probable. It is. It's February first, man. Like, like it's been. He, he. I think the last time he played was the nineteenth. I mean, we're looking at like two weeks. So, Kings yeah. Actually, I, am I looking at this wrong? King, oh no, here we are. But James, because the Brooklyn, because Brooklyn does play tonight, but they are. He is probable. So, maybe. But who's probable tonight? Uh, James Harden for Tuesday's game against the. Uh, yeah, but that doesn't mean he's going to play on the back-to-back. Correct, right. Yeah, and I mean, maybe Kyrie plays. Yeah, because they're going to play I Phoenix. Know. I don't know. It's a mess. All right, Sean, um, let's get to the business of basketball. There it is. Bum, bum, bum. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, do you think that they're going to be able to add an all-star? Do you think that I mean, they're going to be able to do something here that makes a difference beyond this year? I think it's possible. I mean, if you re- if you rewind to a couple episodes again, you we we wanted to do the percentages of like them making some big franchise altering move, and I had it about forty percent, you know. And I still think that exists. And I think you know, just like I said a few minutes ago, the the longer this this terrible streak continues, the brighter and brighter that pick gets. And I think there's going to be people that are interested in it. For example, like what if you're New Orleans, you know, like. If if you're really looking to you know look whatever you have in Zion Williamson you've got a big man with a bad foot and that ain't good and there's not a lot of hope right now that he's you know you have to literally just you probably have to just shut him down and just figure it out next year so in that case like shouldn't you just move Brandon Ingram I mean look if I'm the Kings and I can offer Buddy Hield and uh, and a first round pick for Brandon Ingram I'm doing it right no I'm with you but he's and not an all star. Who? Well, that's fine, but he is a player that, in the right situation, could play like one. Could be. I mean, he could be an absolute great player here. Yeah, I think so. I think the problem that I have right now, Sean, is what I don't want to see is is a trade that, in all reality, I mean, is, hold on, let me cut you off neutral. the real yes. quick. Andrew Wiggins is an all star. Who would you rather have, Andrew Wiggins uh, or Brandon? Uh, well, Andrew Wiggins is an all star. <laughs> Come on, just because you play an all star game doesn't mean you're an all star. I could still see a pathway for Brandon Ingram to be an all-star player. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's, that's totally true. I, but here's a problem that we have, Sean. The Kings are now, like, we're not talking about Ben Simmons anymore. Sabonis noise has kind of died down. Now we're looking at that second tier or third tier or even fourth tier. In some. So if we get to a group that's Jeremy Grant – and uh, and Brandon Ingram and um, you know, Julius Randle, like those three, those guys really aren't all stars. No, and, no, they're not. And, and while I, I think we can say that, I mean, they, Randall, Randall is a legit all star. But yeah, yeah, okay, but not playing. But at I'm all. with he's you. Like even if you, this year, even if all. you put John Collins in that mix, like he's not. Obviously, he's not an all star. Could he yeah. be? Maybe. So now we've got to a level of player that, again, you start looking at Harrison Barnes and saying, here's Harrison Barnes. Like, Jeremy Grant. 
I feel like you're going to do the here's 50 feet of crap. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I, I'm just saying that, like, if we're looking at Brandon In- Ingram, we're like, okay. We're looking at Julius Randle, we're like, okay. We're looking at Jeremy Grant, we're like, okay. Lower. Yeah, maybe even a little bit lower. So at what point do you start to look at this and go, are we really getting better? Are we just basically doing the Rudy Gay trade, the Harrison Barnes trade? the trade for a non-all-star that we're going to pay like an all-star because we're the Sacramento Kings. And and I think that that is like, again, it's something that you have to avoid if you're the Kings. I don't know if they can though. I don't think, I, I don't think they can. That's the, that's the, that's where, that's where it's so hard. That's why this job is so hard for, for these front office types, because certainly they've got, they can play like an all-star, but if you come to Sacramento, it's like, are you really the guy that's going to put everyone on your back and lead them? No, probably not. But that's it's tough. Let me ask you this, James. What it just fantasy world? This is complete fantasy, and so I probably shouldn't even freaking ask it. But like, if I were to tell you that the Kings' moves at the All Star break or at the All Star break at the trade deadline would be absolute minimal, meaning like the the Tristan Thompson of a second round pick, the fleece you know maybe maybe you trade harrison and you get a late first round pick. i don't know i don't know what it is some i would even consider that to be rather minimal let's just say let's just keep it at that team stays relatively the same and you get into the off season but if i was to sell you at the off season after the lottery because i think people want to see where this pick ends up you end up with ben simmons after all but it costs you that pick how how good would you be feeling at that point? Obviously, depending upon the trade, but yeah, I mean because that's where I think you're looking. I mean, just because movement doesn't happen right here, and I've said this, James, it's whether you land Ben Simmons or not. Like being a part of that deal, I still feel can disrupt your franchise in the right way. I'm I'm with you, like, and I think that that would that would change a lot of things because at this point, Sean, like this season's over, like that's. That's where I'm looking at. Like, uh, there's no way to recover this season. Like, I don't, I don't see it. Like, you could make two gigantic moves and bring in all kinds of talent. I still don't think you fix it. I think. That, By the way, you could bring in Ben Simmons, and I don't think it fixes it this year. This year, like, th- like no. I don't, like I said, this year be damned. I don't care. I would want yeah. Ben Simmons to play certainly and and get in recondition and all that stuff. But like, you would have to hope that he finds his confidence and don't worry about the wins and losses at that point. Just go out there, find some confidence, get with the right people, get attached with Rico and stay there. You know, those are the types of things that would have to happen. And again, I don't care who you're bringing in this season. Be damned. It doesn't matter this season. This season is not worth saving. I I agree. 100%. The season is not worth saving. It's not even worth trying to save. It's not. I mean, we got to a point where we're, we're literally asking the head coach if if his team has quit. Right. And it's about to become, hey, why didn't you play Kato more? Well, I mean <laughs> That's what it's gonna be. Like why two weeks from now. Some of these guys? Yeah. Two weeks from now, I think we're looking at Namias Kata playing good minutes. I think we're looking at uh maybe Jemias. I, I don't we're not gonna see the whole group playing a ton of minutes, but I think you're gonna see what you have in Luke King. Um, you know, I, I think you are gonna like give Chemezi an opportunity here. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, even if like you, you have to do something. Um, and, and at this point, I, I think you have to do something that doesn't damage the franchise long term. You need to start where, looking at deals that that make sense. Where are you on Rashawn Holmes? Um, the luster's off that diamond a little bit. The shine is off that. The sparkle's gone a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think my consideration would be like, if he's gone, what's next? Um, I had this discussion with my oldest son. If he was gone, like, well, what happens next year? And it's like, do you bring Damian Jones back? You have Alex Lynn under contract, and it's Namias Keda. Oh. Um, no. Like, no. Well, no. I mean, you're going to have to address the situation, right? Um, even if you're high on Keda, like I'm high on Keda. I know a lot of people around the Kings are high on Keda. Like, still, you're going to have a young guy who gets in foul trouble all the time. You're going to have a young guy who makes mistakes, who, you know, can he play 82 games? We don't know any of that stuff. So, like, you're going to have to do something different. Like, if I, if it's, uh, like, Charlotte has been interested in him forever, yeah, I would listen for P.J. Washington. Um, but I'd probably want P.J. Washington and something else. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, Toronto probably is looking for a big man. Um, I think the Bulls are looking for a big man. Like, I think you could find a home for Rashawn Holmes relatively easy because his contract is so uh, workable. And, uh, yeah, I, I at this point, Sean, I don't think anything... Oh, no, like, no, nobody's we, untouchable. <laughs> we keep saying that everyone is available. That means yeah. that Rashawn Holmes is available. Um, as long as it, you know, again, like the Kings keep saying, as long as it makes us better going forward. Um, what the I contract is the contract is super manageable, and the thing I think that is a good thing. I think there's I've seen a big shift on him, and I again I think the sparkle is gone off that diamond a little bit, but I think again like this season's so bad that if I'm not saying move him, I just I just wonder where people are at with that. Like I think people thought, oh this guy's part of the core, and it clearly doesn't really look like that, unfortunately. So you know where where's the appetite of hoping to move him versus oh we hope he's here next year yeah i would say this if somehow the kings were to have like reignite some crazy contract negotiations with 76ers where they took back tobias harris and um and ben simmons and gave up first round picks uh buddy healed um you know the the harrison barnes uh, tristan thompson marvin bagley i like rashawn holmes with that team and, yeah, I do and too. I still like him, uh, and I I still hope that like they can figure things out. But certainly, uh, between the eye injuries, the the COVID, um, it just he hasn't looked like himself. And I think that there are teams out there that could use a guy like him who's under contract for another three years and who's going to give them really solid minutes. Uh, and I think that that's worth value. I think you can go out and get a first round pick. Uh, for for Rashawn Holmes, and you might be able to get a first round pick from a team that's in the you know not in the lottery, but right outside the lottery. You know, one of those teams like um, I don't know, again like Charlotte, Toronto. I don't know where they're at in the standings right now, but if you're getting a twenties pick um, and maybe a a young player, maybe a book night, maybe um, something like that, maybe even uh, go with a Kai Jones and get something young. Uh, to replace him in a first round pick and stuff like that. Again, PJ Washington. I, I think that Charlotte is a good place to go and mm-hmm. try to figure out some guys that you could get there. Um, I, again, I think the Kings can use a stretch four, uh, no matter what, and that's why I look at PJ Washington as like a guy that I would take. Um, but I, I think that you know Toronto has some guys as well that you would kick the tires on and really like think strongly about in a move for him. And you know you're not going to get one of their core pieces for him at this point, you're going to get a young player no. and, and some, uh, some draft capital and stuff like that. But I mean, I don't know. I'd even consider like, would you trade him to, to, uh, to Portland, um, uh, for, uh, for Powell? Is that what I'm thinking? No, uh, probably not. I mean, not, not straight up. I mean, maybe there's some other possibilities there, but no, I probably wouldn't be inclined to do that. Would no? you? No. Well, I mean, if it's part of a different, if it's part of yeah, a I mean, deal. I guess it just depends on what else you know, what you're, I guess what you're thinking there, but. Well, I, I mean, I think that that's like you're. That would be that you're dumping Buddy Hield. You're doing other things. I mean, again, Norman Powell's got a big contract moving forward: sixteen point seven, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So maybe not, but you know, it's something that I I would at least like listen in on and be like, okay, look, if if they're trying to move off of some pieces and look at Anthony Simons as like the future, you know, and, you Mm -hmm. know, I think they're going to be a player when it comes to uh, like, uh, like CJ McCollum is going to be out there. Uh, We're going to see, I I still think like the next nine days is going to be pretty wild. So could be. All right. Sean, (laughs) do you have any, do you have any final thoughts? Do I have final thoughts? I have too many final thoughts. Um, Go read. That Ben Simmons article on ESPN Plus by the wonderful Ramona Shelburne. Uh, I think here's here's what I will predict. If you're a fan of Ben Simmons and you want him to come to Sacramento, I don't think it's going to change your mind. And if you hate Ben Simmons, based on all the drama that you've heard, I think this is going to make you hate him even more. Hmm. Boy, that's dramatic. A little bit. A little bit. There, I mean, there's. It's just such a nasty situation, and 
boy. I mean, it is a nasty situation there. And you might read that and you go, how does Philly not move this guy? But I think it's just important to realize that they're such a good team right now. Like, keep that in the back of your mind. And I know it's easy to say, but you got to figure out. You, I, I feel like they're that you know the people who think, oh, Daryl Morey's got to do something and help them get them help for this playoff run. Blah blah blah. Maybe, maybe not. I think he's still got to get them help for this playoff run. If he's not going to play, you well, got to get him help. That's I, the that's the that's the read the article. All right, it's a good one. Interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to YouTube. Make sure to give a thumbs up. Uh, in the description on YouTube, you'll find links to things like The King's Beat, uh, to Sean Cunningham's, Sean Cunningham's <laughs> Instagram account. Ooh. Um, and had a lot of traction on that over the past week. Oh, this past see? weekend. See, we had a fake Kyle Shanahan that just went viral. Um, oh, well, fake so, Sean. I saw fake uh, Kyle Shanahan in your – and yeah, that was good it's stuff. It's all over ESPN. And, yeah, that guy – first of all, uh, I'm glad you, I'm glad I got to mention that real quick because I think I'm going to talk to him uh, oh, maybe today or tomorrow. talking to fake Kyle Shanahan? Fake Kyle Shanahan, it, yeah. Does he really look anything like him when you Dude, really look he at him? He looked at – yeah, he kind of looked like him. Like there was a resemblance, you know. Um, all right. I, got, I, I had his buddy send me what his uh, – what his actual uh, play sheet looked like. So I posted that on the Instagram stories. So yeah, there's some good stuff there going on. Okay, so uh, we yeah. We gotta get James on the Instagram. I, I did put, uh, I put my Graham uh, link in there as well. Um, and also Facebook. Uh, I do have a, a Facebook page for, uh, for the journalism side. Um, like I'm not gonna be friends with you using my personal, uh, my personal friends. account. No. <laughs> Uh, well no it's just like even that's why i don't like promote my instagram account because there are plenty of pictures of like our trip to europe with my wife and my boys um and the creepers out there like they're they're creepers all over i don't yeah i don't have that i know i I try to keep all that i get it i get it but i want to i want to get you on the gram i think you'd be fun see sean just to just put it out there he's not one of those people that gets creeped He's one of the creepers. Yeah, no, what I'm saying, <laughs> I, I do a very good job. Like, it's not very hard. I, 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 for some people it is, but I have made, even on like Facebook, I keep private because that's for people who I know. I don't add people who I don't know. Same thing. Uh, I don't want a professional Facebook page because nobody's on Facebook um, going forward, you know. So I get it. But like with Twitter and Instagram, things I I use it very much for work purpose. And then you'll see if I'm at a concert or stuff like that. You'll actually see too much of me at a concert because I I like to post a lot. But I don't Tasteful like to put nudes. the f- Tasteful yes. nudes. Tasteful nudes. Sean's at, con- Sean at concerts. <laughs> That's for the premium subscribers. <laughs> uh, get my only fans popping. Uh, yeah, but no, I mean, come on, man. There's there's I, I don't like to put a lot of family and stuff like that because not everyone signs up for that kind of thing. So. Yeah, it's fun yeah. stuff, though. But I think there's a lot of fun to be had in the gram, and I think you'd like it. Okay. Uh, I will consider expanding. I saw what you were doing when you had your gram, and it's in, in, to, in before when you were promoting it pretty well, and I think you fit the part, so it'll be fine. What? I don't you know. You did. Uh, well, we'll, we you go will to see. You go to great places throughout the world, things I'm jealous of, so you should definitely post that. I, I do like, when I do travel, I, I like putting stuff up. Um, but even like when we went to Maui, I, I didn't put anything up when we were on our trip to Maui. This we summer. need an Insta poll. Would you follow James Ham on Instagram? Yeah, I think I remember looking at the numbers. So I remember how many subscribers I have now. Let's see how many I have after I put that in the description below. Um, but also, if you uh, get a chance, make sure you subscribe to the King's Beat. Uh, if you're super, super into the King's Beat, which you should be because uh, we're doing awesome things, then you need to become a premium subscriber. Uh, there are going to be changes coming to that very soon. Um, and once that stuff happens, uh, you're going to get blocked out of some of the content that we're making here. Um, also, uh, we have decided to push the King's Beat Happy Hour to uh, right after the, uh, the trade deadline. Breaking so I'm going to get with Sean, and we're going to figure out a date, and we'll put that out Um we might just make it like February fourteenth and screw everyone's like uh, Valentine's Day up. No, we're not doing that. Oh yeah, we can't do that. No, we can't do that. 
<laughs> no, that's the problem. Like, right. The February is a bit of a weird month and it's compacted and short and all that stuff. Um, but we're definitely, we're ready to roll with another ha happy hour, uh, coming very soon. Um, outside of that, uh, stick with us because you know, we're again, the King season is bad, but we're going to give you as much inside information as you possibly can get. Uh, and certainly more information than you can get anywhere else. Um, you're talking to two guys who have been doing this for a long time, and uh, that's what we bring to the table. Uh, Sean, again, no final thoughts? No movies this it. weekend? I, I didn't see anything. I'm so far behind. I need to see. got to catch up on Bill Maher. i got to catch up on SNL. i got to catch up on um, Euphoria. i got to start Euphoria back up. Uh, I haven't watched Euphoria. Show. Ooh, on HBO. Um, yeah, yeah, there's just a lot. I'm, uh, I, I told myself I was going to start Succession because I was so late to the party on that, so I haven't been able to do that yet. Did you binge watch Ozark? Oh yeah, you bet your ass I did. I got. I'm. I'm very much looking forward to the next seven, which oh. I think I told. I think I said this on the last podcast. You did Jason Bateman said that it's going to come sooner than you think. So yeah, oh. be ready. Yeah, oh. I, that's Ozark. Zark talk is what I'm ready to do. Yeah, yeah, let's I'm talk, all over let's that. Let's talk some Zarks. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I've been binge watching a bunch of uh, like weird PBS shows. Um, like I don't know. Like I get on weird runs. Um. And I don't know, there was some Apple, some new Apple uh, TV one. Oh, I bench watched one and then I started another. Um, yeah, I like I watch too many shows. It, Here's like, one. How about this? It's on Netflix. Uh, Lost Daughter with Olivia Coleman, Dakota Johnson, Ed Harris is in it. Uh, I like to say it's a little bit of a slow burn, but it's all right. very, very good. And acting superb and a little bit of a, hey, what the hell just happened at the end? Okay. I, I really like Ed Harris. Uh, I, yeah. Needful things. Oh, God. Phenomenal in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. A little phenomenal. bit more of a tertiary character in this one, but okay. I think you'll like it. All right. All right. Okay. So that's going to do it for this edition of the King's Beat Podcast. <laughs> uh, we will be back on Thursday, um, I believe, because the Kings play that night against the Golden State Warriors. Sean, are you going to the game? I'm not. No, I will be. I I'm will be either. here. I, I needed to. I needed to pull back a bit. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna be fine. I still have to. We, we're still figuring out if we're doing Super Bowl stuff. Fortunately, I when well, I say fortunately, um, I will not be at the game. But there's a lot of stuff in the the week ahead in LA that I I may be there for. But I think I'm not. I think I'm gonna. If I was a betting man, I think I'm gonna be here, hunkered in on the trade deadline. Uh, as as we watch this team unravel, <laughs> it's about to get real. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. So we'll see you on Thursday. Uh, hopefully, we have a big trade to talk about between now and then. Um, if not, uh, I would be ready for emergency pods over the weekend. Um, Sean and I will burn the midnight oil uh, here to to make sure that we're uh, we're getting you the best content that we possibly can in the quickest, you know, up to date. Like, holy cow! I can't believe that just happened. Or, holy cow, I can't believe that did not just happen. And, uh, it, you know, things could get worse. I, I don't think they can, Sean. I don't think they can. Um, yeah. I, I might have to. The way these these days are going to start working as my AirPod falls out is I'm probably, if we do one of those pods where it's like an emergency pod and I've just wrapped up an ABC 10, I might just hightail it to get a quick drink and just set up at a bar somewhere so you can just see just the, the agony of just trying to wrap up all the, the crazy work that just happens when something just ha just breaks like that. There's so much that in, that goes on. and uh, You it, know what the best be, answer, be Sean, is? It's to just build the bar in your house. Man, I wish I could. You can just I bust could, up man. to James's house and we'll just drink and do a, an emergency pod. All right, that's it. We're going to wrap this thing up. Yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in to the King's Beat Podcast for Sean Cunningham from ABC10. I am James Ham. Good to see you. We'll see you on Thursday.